This is a tutorial on solving compound inequalities. There are two types of compound inequalities, and the first one we're going to talk about are compound inequalities involving the word and. They're usually represented like these two examples in front of us. Our first example is 5 is less than or equal to x plus 7, which is less than or equal to 10. We can rewrite this expression as 5 is less than or equal to x plus 7, and x plus 7 is less than or equal to 10. Now we can solve each one of these individually. For the first one, we would just subtract 7 from both sides, and we would get negative 2 needs to be less than or equal to x. And if we solve the other one, we have x plus 7 is less than or equal to 10. Again, we subtract 7 from both sides, and we would get x is less than or equal to 3. Now this first equation, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, I'm just going to rewrite and flip. I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to negative 2, that means the same thing. And then we'll graph these on their number lines. So the first one here, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, I would go to negative 2 on the number line, and I would put a solid point because this is a greater than or equal to, and it's everything greater than negative 2. So it would be everything to the right on the number line. Our second equation is x is less than or equal to 3. That one I can graph on a number line. I would go to 3 on the number line, which is right here. And it's everything less than or equal to. So I put a solid point because it's equal to. And I shade everything to the left or everything less than 3 on the number line. Now to finish graphing this, we have two equations here, or two sets of solutions, and the word and in between them, which means our values of x have to satisfy both of these solutions. Well, our key points are negative 2 and 3. So all the numbers between these two points will satisfy this equation. So we're going to combine the two parts of both of these lines into one graph. So we'll put a solid point at negative 2, and we'll put a solid point at positive 3, and we shade everything in between those two points, and this is the graph of our solution set. You can also write this as negative 2 needs to be less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. So this is our solution, and this is the graph of our solution for this example. Let's try the next one. Here we have 1 is less than or negative 3x plus 4, which is less than 10. Well, to solve this one, I'm going to break it up again. We'll have 1 is less than negative 3x plus 4, and negative 3x plus 4 has to be less than 10. Well, to solve this, I'll subtract 4 from both sides. In this first equation, we'll get negative 3 is less than negative 3x. Then we'll divide both sides by negative 3. If we do that, we'll have a positive 1 on the left-hand side. Now, we divide it by a negative number, so don't forget to switch your inequality sign. This less than becomes a greater than sign. And then negative 3x divided by negative 3 is just x. So our first set of solutions is x has to be less than 1 or 1 has to be greater than x. Our second equation here, again we'll subtract 4 from both sides. We'll end up with negative 3x has to be less than 6. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 3. And we'll end up with x has to be greater than, because we switched our inequality, because we divided by a negative number. So x has to be greater than negative 2. Now if we combine these two, we end up with 1 has to be greater than x, which has to be greater than negative 2. I'm going to rewrite this and switch my inequality signs. So we'll just have negative 2 has to be less than x, which has to be less than 1. And now we'll graph this. Our first equation is x has to be less than 1. 
I just rewrote this first equation where 1 is greater than x. And to graph that, we go to 1 in our number line, and we put an open circle, because this is a less than sign, and therefore 1 is not a valid solution. But it's everything less than 1, so we shade everything to the left of 1 on our number line. Our next solution is x has to be greater than negative 2. So if we go to negative 2 on our number line, again we're going to put an open circle because it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. And everything has to be greater than negative 2. So we shade everything to the right of negative 2 on our number line. Now to get our final solution, we combine these two graphs. So we end up with a solution that looks like this. And to do that, we look at our key points. One is at negative 2, and the other one is at positive 1. These are both open circles, so we'll put an open circle at both points. And the only x values that satisfy both of these inequalities are the points between them. So we shade in everything between negative 2 and positive 1. So this would be our final solution of this compound inequality, and this is the graph of this compound inequality's solutions. Now the next type of compound inequalities we're going to talk about are compound inequalities involving the word or. Our first example here is negative 3 plus x must be greater than 1 or negative 3 plus x must be less than negative 4. Well just like before we'll solve these two statements individually. This first one negative 3 plus x must be greater than 1. We add 3 to both sides and we'll get x has to be greater than 4. If we plot that on a number line, we go to 4 on our number line, and we put an open circle because this is a greater than, not a greater than or equal to, and it's everything greater than 4 or everything to the right on the number line, so we shade everything to the right, and that would be the solution for our first condition of our compound inequality. The second one, negative 3 plus x has to be less than negative 4. Well, again, we add 3 to both sides, and we'll get x has to be less than negative 1. Now, if we graph that on a number line, we go to negative 1 in our number line, which is right here, and we put an open circle because negative 1 is not a solution. It's just everything less than negative 1. So we shade everything less than negative 1, or everything to the left on the number line, so these are all solutions of that second part of our expression. Now we need values of x that satisfy one or the other one of these expressions. So that means the combination of these two graphs is our final solution. x has to be greater than 4 or x has to be less than negative 1. So to graph this, we just combine these two graphs. We have our key points at negative 1 and at 4. They're both open circles. And then we shade everything to the right of 4 and everything to the left of negative 1. And this final number line here is the graph of our solution. Let's try this again. Here we have negative 2x plus 6 has to be greater than 8 or negative 2x plus 6 has to be less than negative 2. So once again we're going to solve these individually. We'll take the left hand side of the OR first. To do that we subtract 6 from both sides. We'll get negative 2x has to be greater than 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. And we'll get x has to be less than negative 1. Notice I switched my inequality sign here because I divided by a negative number. So our first solution set is x has to be less than negative 1. So to graph that we go to negative 1 on our number line. We put an open circle because this is a less than sign, not a less than or equal to. And it's everything less than, so it's everything to the left on the number line. The second set negative 2x plus 6 has to be less than negative 2. We can solve that again. We'll subtract 6 from both sides. We'll get negative 2x has to be less than negative 8. Divide both sides by negative 2. And you get x is greater than 
positive 4. Notice, again, I switched my inequality signs because we divided by a negative number. Now to graph this second solution set, we have x is greater than 4. So we go to 4 on our number line and we put an open circle because it's a less or greater than, not a greater than or equal to. And we shade everything to the right on the number line. Now we combine these two sets to get our final solution. The final solution is x has to be less than negative 1 or x has to be greater than 4. And to graph this final solution, we just combine these two graphs. We have key points at negative 1, which is an open circle, and another one at 4, which again is an open circle. And we shade everything to the left of negative 1 and everything to the right of positive 4. So this would be the graph of our solution. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is identifying compound inequalities. Here we're given two graphs and we're going to try to come up with the expression that these represent. Our first one here has a positive 2 with an open circle and then everything to the right of that is a solution. So if it's a positive circle, that means it's a greater than sign because everything to the right of it is shaded, but not a greater than or equal to. So this is a x must be greater than 2, and that represents everything to the right of 2, or this half of our solution. Next we have a closed circle at negative 5, and everything to the left, or less than negative 5, is shaded. So this is going to be x is less than or equal to, because this is a solid point, of negative 5. Now notice these graphs go in opposite directions. There's no value of x that can satisfy both of these solutions. So since there's no value of x that can satisfy both, that means this is an or compound inequality. So our solution then is x has to be less than or equal to negative 5 or x has to be greater than 2. Let's look at our second graph. Here we have an open circle at negative 3. And everything to the right of negative 3 is shaded. So that means everything has to be greater than negative 3. So x would have to be greater than negative 3. Now down here at 5, we have a closed circle and everything to the left of 5 is shaded. So that means every x has to be less than or equal to 5. Now all the points that are between these would satisfy both of these inequalities. That makes this an AND compound inequality. Which means x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than 5. Well, if we rewrite this, we'll switch this first term here as negative 3 is less than x. And then we'll combine these two together and we'll write our solution as negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5. And that completes the tutorial on compound inequalities.